الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته The Holy Quran indicates that one of the qualities of believers is that they consult each other. The Holy Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ The Quran describes the believers in three ways, three traits that they have. Listen carefully, brothers and sisters. We should try to achieve these traits as believers. The month of Ramadan, we're trying to build ourselves. Number one, the Holy Quran says, وَالَّذِينَ اسْتَجَابُوا لِرَبِّهِمْ They pledge their allegiance to Allah. They answer the call of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Any verse in the Holy Quran that calls for something, they fulfill that duty. Number two, وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةِ They are steadfast in their salah. And number three, وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ and they conduct their affairs with consultation. Meaning, a quality of a believer is that he always consults others, always asks advice for others. At the end of the day, no matter how smart, intelligent, wise, experienced I think I may be, I am an imperfect human being. And my judgment sometimes may not be the best judgment. So thus it makes sense if you want to make a decision if you want to take action first seek advice ask other people see what they think because maybe you're only looking at the situation from one angle and when you ask other people and seek their advice they can show you other angles and other perspectives and when you have all these perspectives in front of you you can definitely make a better decision and that's why you find read about the successful people in life throughout history, they all have one common habit. What? They have advisors. Correct? They have advisors. They have advisory boards. Whether it is people who are successful in business, they have advisory boards. Many of these companies, correct? Leaders, successful leaders, they have advisors that always what? That always try to show them, that always try to guide them. And they seek their guidance and they seek their advice before making important decisions. And likewise, look at for example Rasulullah and the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. They would likewise seek the advice of their companions. In fact, Allah orders Rasulullah in the Quran to seek the advice of his companions, to consult them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْفَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكِ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ Ya Rasulullah, if it was not for your akhlaq, for the fact that you're so nice and respectful and polite, the people, your companions would have abandoned you. So Ya Rasulullah, be merciful with them. Be forgiving if they make mistakes. And then the Quran says, وَشَاوِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ And consult them. Ask them for their opinion. Ask them for their advice. Now I ask you, when you are the messenger of Allah, and you can ask Allah, do you need to ask your companions who are fallible? If I am ma'soom, infallible, why should I ask people who are not ma'soom, who are fallible? I can just get, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah guides me. No. The Quran wants to set an example that even Rasulullah seeks advice. Even Rasulullah consults other people. Yes, the Prophet didn't need his ashab because you could have asked Jibra'il. Jibra'il, go and ask Allah, what should I do now? Where should I go? Correct? What should I do in this situation? But he wanted to teach us a lesson and set an example. That if you want to have a successful community, you have to seek the advice of others. Especially if you're a community leader. If you're a community leader, you're in a board of a masjid, you're influential, people respect you. Don't make decisions independently. Seek the advice of others. Rasulullah 
was ordered by Allah to seek advice. But I'm better than Rasulullah. I'm more knowledgeable than Rasulullah. I have more expertise than Rasulullah. This is a very arrogant way of thinking. When I think that I don't need to consult, I don't need to ask other people for advice. For example, it is reported that in times of war, Rasulullah would always seek the advice of his companions. And I'll give you two examples. One is mentioned in the Battle of Badr. These are the days of Battle of Badr, 16, 17 Ramadan. This is the anniversary of the first battle in Islam, the Battle of Badr. It is reported that Rasulullah consulted his Ashab in two matters. Number one, when they arrived to the location, the Muslimin were only 313 people. Word reached, news reached the Prophet. News reached the Prophet that the Kuffar are coming with 1,000 warriors. 300 versus 1,000. So we are outnumbered big time. What do we do? Rasulullah could have independently made the decision. But it is reported that Rasulullah said, Ashiru alayya ashabi. My ashab, I ask you, what do you think? Should we stay and fight or should we go back to Medina? It's reported that he asked them and most of them said, La ya Rasulullah, let us stay. In takunu, what the, the verse of the Holy Quran says, In takunu mi'atan taghlibu alfan bi'idhnillah. Right? If you're 100, you can defeat 1,000. That the numbers don't matter. And this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought the verse. And in the end, they were victorious. So he consulted his ashab. Should we go and stay? They said stay. And then that they decided to stay. Where should they set their camp? Where should they settle? They needed a strategic place. So he asked his ashab as the hadith says. This is when one of his companions by the name of Al-Hubab ibn al-Mundhir. He said, Ya Rasulullah, I think we should come and settle in this area. And Rasulullah, he accepted Rasulullah, he followed the advice of his companion. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the battle of Badr, you find he shows us practically how we have to be humble. We have to seek the advice of other people, even if they are not as educated as us, even if they are not that great like us. Another example, in the battle of Al-Ahzab. Battle of Al-Ahzab, the Muslims are in their city in Medina. The mushrikeen of the pagans of Quraysh, they conspire with the Jews of Bani Quraidha and they launch a war against the Muslims. They're coming on the way. Rasulullah, he gathers his ashab. What should we do? What, what advice do you give me? Salman al-Farisi, it's reported. He told Rasulullah, brothers and sisters, I want you to pay attention to a word that I'm repeating. Why do I keep on saying it's reported? There's a reason, because I'm fasting. And you know, one of the mufattirat, is Al-Kadhib ala Allah wa Rasulah, right? If you say something about Rasulullah, which is not true. So I can't just come out and say that these things happen for sure. I say it's reported. Because at the end of the day, we don't know. We have a hadith. So are they sahih? Are they not sahih? Even the hadith of it's sahih, we can't be 100% sure. You know, as someone said, Tikdar tahlif bil Abbas. I cannot, you know, swear in the Abbas that the Prophet did this. So it's reported. So when I give my lectures in Ramadan, I always try to mention this disclaimer. It's reported. Ruya, qila. So that if it wasn't true, it will not affect my fast. Anyway, this is just as a benefit. So Salman al farisi it's reported. He told Rasulullah, I have an idea. This is an idea that we used to have, what? In Bilad Faris, in the Persian Empire, when I was there. Let's build a what? Let's dig a trench. Let's dig a khandaq, a trench, a big trench. They say that it was more than two meters or three meters wide. So that the enemies, when they come, they cannot enter the city with their horses, right? The horse can't jump that, uh, that much. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam accepted. And this is when they surrounded the Muslims, the city of Medina with a trench. And that's why when the kuffar came, that battle was known as Harb al Khandaq. The battle of Khandaq. Khandaq means the trench. So it was called the battle of the trenches. Who came up with this idea? As it's reported, Salman. Rasulullah asked his companions and he gave him this idea. So this was a habit of Rasulullah, a quality of Rasulullah to ask his companions. Likewise, the Imams of Ahlul Bayt. We read, for example, Al Imam al Sadiq, Fudayl, one of his companions, he says, Al Imam al Sadiq one day calls me 
And he says, I want to seek your advice. Fadhil says, I was surprised. Ya ibn Rasulullah, you are the Imam and you want to seek my advice? He said, yes, what's the problem? You are an expert in this field and I will, for example, seek your advice in this field. Imam al-Sadiq saw advice from his companions. Another example, Imam al-Rada alayhi salam, Muammar ibn Khalad says that one day, one of the servants of Imam al-Rada died. Imam al-Rada needs another servant. The servant has to be trustworthy. He has to be someone that the Imam can rely on, correct? He, not anyone can become the servant of Imam al-Rada. So Muammar ibn Khalad says, Imam al-Rada calls me. He says, I need your help. I'm asking for you to give me advice. Who should I choose as my next servant? Muammar ibn Khalad says, I was shocked. Ya ibn Rasulullah, you ask me to help you in this situation? He says, I saw the Imam, and Imam Rada was angered. And he told me, yes, what's the problem? Rasulullah used to consult his Ashab. So why should I not consult my Ashab? You see, this shows the humility of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And I saw up to 175 hadiths in my research, brothers and sisters, up to 175 hadiths from Rasulullah and the Imams, all telling us one thing, make sure that you make it a habit to seek advice. Don't make decisions independently. No, seek advice, consult, and then make decisions. 175 hadiths. That shows you this is something very important. Now, when we come to the ahadith of Ahlul Bayt, we find three benefits of consulting. There are three benefits of seeking advice. Now we know about many of the benefits, but these are three interesting benefits that Imam Ali alayhi salam points to. Number one, the first benefit of seeking advice before you make any decision is that the Imam says, مَنْ لَزِمَ الْمُشَاوَرَ لَمْ يُعْدَمْ عِنْدَ الصَّوَابِ the Imam says, if you seek advice and then it turns out to be a bad decision, no one will blame you. Let me give an example. Imagine I have an idea for you, people of Toledo, Mu'mineen of Toledo. I have an idea that just like in Dearborn, how they're having the Suhoor festival, I think that we should have a Suhoor festival in Toledo. Now maybe many of you may agree with me, maybe many of you may not. But let's say I come without consulting you, and I خلص, I get with a couple of brothers, and I independently make this decision, Yalla, let's have a suhoor festival next week. Now if it turns out to be a success, everyone's happy, people will call me, thank you Sayyid, shukran, it was beautiful, right? I received the praise. But what if it turns out to be a failure? Everyone will blame me. They will say it's the Sayyid's fault. He made this decision. When you make an independent decision, you don't ask others, everyone will blame you. Even though at the time, it made sense. At the time, everyone agreed. But because I didn't ask, I didn't seek advice, everyone will blame me. Versus if I come on the member and I ask you brothers and sisters, let's have a vote. Should we have a suhoor festival like Dearborn? And then most of you say yes. And then we do it, but then it fails. Can you come and blame me? You can't blame me back. Imam Ali says, seek advice. Because in that way you can deflect blame. And this is also, brothers and sisters, a tip in your family matters. One problem we have in our, some families is that, is that either the husband, which is most of the time, or sometimes the wife, they act as dictators. They want to call all the shots. We have to go to this place. And we have to buy this. And we have to do this. And our son is going to this school. There is no compromise. I'll speak more about this tomorrow, how we should compromise when it comes to our kids. There is no negotiations. There is no consultations. And most of the times it's the father, correct? When the father makes the decision as a dictator without seeking advice, and then something bad happens, the whole family will blame him. I remember a brother once told me, I went on a vacation with my family. Vacation, I spent thousands of dollars. I wanted them to have fun, but he said, I called all the shots. I did not ask them, where do you want to go? How do you want to spend the time? You know, which hotel, which airline? I did everything. He says, when we arrive there, anything bad happens, they blame me. For example, he says, we got COVID there. They started to yell at me and blame me. So, it's not my fault. But because I didn't seek their advice, even though they were having fun, now they have a scapegoat. He says, the flight was delayed two hours. They're angry with me. 
What does that have to do with me? He says, something happened with the car rental. They're angry with me. Something happened with the hotel. They're ang anything that happens, even though I did it with good intentions, I wanted to take them to the vacation so they have fun. And I spent thousands of dollars. But anything would happen, they would blame me. He says, I learned a lesson after that. When we want to go on a vacation, I ask them, my dear wife, my dear children, where do you think we should go? Most of the times, they will agree. They won't say, let's not go to Florida. Come on. If the father is telling their children, let's go to, for example, Florida and spring break, whatever, and let's enjoy ourselves or let's go to Hawaii. They're not going to tell him, no, we don't want to go. They're going to want to go. But the benefit of that is that if something goes wrong, you get COVID and stranded, no one can blame you. You guys said, let's go to Hawaii. That has nothing to do with me. So this is number one. Number two, the second benefit Imam Ali alayhi salam says of seeking advice, he says, When you seek advice, there is comfort for you and trouble for others. What does the Imam mean? It's a very deep hadith. I was thinking about it for a long time. Based on my opinion, my understanding, the Imam is trying to say this, do not try to reinvent the wheel. Many people when they have a problem, they go through so much research and difficulty trying to, uh, trying to see what the solution is. The Imam says, ask people that already have the solution. I go to some communities, they tell me, say it. You know, our Shabab don't come to the masjid. What do we do? They panic and they start, you know, trying to brainstorm and they, they try to do so many, you know, weird ideas just to bring the Shabab. When I go to these areas, I tell them, look, you don't have to try to reinvent the wheel. There are already other organizations in the US and Canada. They have successful youth organizations. Learn from their experience. Call them, ask them. Seek advice. You don't have to do everything independently. The Imam says there is raha for you, comfort for you. You don't have to try to reinvent and go through the mistakes and go through the trial and error because other people already did that. So this is number two. Number three, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam is narrated saying, إِنَّمَا خُصَّ عَلَى الْمُشَاوَرَةِ لِأَنَّ رَأْيَ الْمُشِيرِ صِرْفٌ such a beautiful hadith. The Imam says you should always seek advice because your opinion is always biased and others' opinions are more objective. What does the Imam mean? The Imam means as many times we base our decision on emotions, not on ration, not on intellect. And this happens, you know when? I see some people, they fall in love. A young guy and a young girl. He falls in love with the girl. He wants to marry her. When I hear about it, I know that this isn't going to work. It's a terrible idea. But they never come and ask. Because they're in love, love blinds you. It doesn't allow you to see the full picture. You start thinking emotionally. You don't think logically. Because of that, you enter this relationship, a couple of months later when the love starts to wind down, you realize it was a terrible idea. Had you sought advice from people, they would have told you. The Imam says that with people who don't have an interest in this situation, they see it objectively. But when it has to do with me, when it's love, I become biased, I'm blinded by love, and I subjectively see it. So when you want to get married, Always seek the advice because maybe I am just thinking emotionally. I'm not thinking rationally. Other people, they don't have that love for the girl. They don't have that love for the guy. So they will give you a more objective opinion. And you know, sometimes that's also the case with houses. We want to buy a house. We're desperate. We enter a house because we see the, the kitchen is so nice. Khalas, I want to buy it. I fall in love with it without doing my due diligence, making sure that everything is good, right? Seek advice. Don't just look at one angle. Until you have an emotional attachment, you saw that beautiful sink, you saw that beautiful countertop, خلاص بعد. You're blinded by that love. Seek advice. After a couple of months, what happens? You realize that this house has 50 flaws, 100 flaws. Because you were blinded by the love, now you see it. Now what? You see more objectively. Other times, brothers and sisters, we do not see our own flaws. Because the human being loves himself and we have a bias towards ourselves, we do not see our flaws. So we make some decisions 
not seeing that we have some flaws that will what? That will impact that decision. Let me give an example. Someone wants to go to med school. If they come and ask me, I know this young guy is lazy. This young guy is so lazy. He's not for med school, correct? Does he see that he's lazy? Have you seen anyone that comes and admits that he's lazy? No. He doesn't see that. The famous poem says, وَعَيْنُ الرِّضَى عَنْ كُلِّ عَيْبٍ كَلِيلَةٌ When you love something, when you love yourself, خلاص بعد. You don't see the flaws. Have you seen anyone say, I'm lazy? No. I want to be a doctor. I want to be this, I want to be that. If you come to me, and I'll give you honest advice, and this is, I'll speak more about this tomorrow, that when we are given advice, we shouldn't make it personal. No hard feelings. I'll speak about this tomorrow, inshallah. If you come to, come to me, I can see you objectively. You're a lazy person. Medical school isn't right for you. Many people, they go medical school after a couple of years, خلص, they waste all those years, they realize it's not right for them because it's too much hard work. So seek when, for your career. I'll speak about this tomorrow, how important it is to seek advice before you choose your career. Because many times we do not realize our personalities. Maybe I don't have the right personality for a doctor, for a lawyer, for a businessman, for an engineer, because I'm biased, I don't see my flaws. Other people can see it. Go and ask them. And sometimes this happens with parents. You know, sometimes a mother comes to me. I've heard this happen many times from my father. Samah Sayyid Hassan, he tells me this many times. A mother comes to the office and she has an appointment. Sayyid, my son and his wife are having so many problems. Sayyid, please, what is it? Is it jinn? Is it magic? I'm sure this is magic. Someone has done magic to my son or daughter. Why do they think parents like that? You know why? Because they don't, they see their kids as angels. If my kid is an angel, there should be no problems, right? Why is my, why is my kid failing in school? He's an angel. It must be jinn. It must be magic. It must be all this, you know, nonsense, superstition that we believe in. But if you ask me, Anna, I don't have that bias. I can see your kid. He's not a good, he's not studying. So if you ask me for advice, why is your kid not, why is he not succeeding? Why is he failing? He's not studying because he's slacking off. Why is this marriage a failure? Because your son has bad habits, because he is selfish, because he is arrogant. You, the mother and father, do not see that. And that's why many people, because of this fact that they're blinded and they don't seek advice, they take action and it becomes worse and worse and worse. Well, you can easily fix it. Bring the young son, sit with him, tell him, Habibi, enter, you're being too selfish. You're staying up till 2 a.m. every night, Sahara with the Shabab, and you're neglecting your wife. You can't do this. Or sometimes it's the wife that's neglecting the husband. But when I'm blind because I love my son, because I love my daughter, and I don't seek advice of other people who can more objectively see the situation, then I intervene and I just make it worse and worse and worse. Seek advice. The Quran says, وَأَمْرُهُمْ شُورًا بَيْنَهُمْ Because when you seek people's advice, they will show you what you cannot see. And finally, when we say seek advice, brothers and sisters, you cannot just seek the advice of just anyone. Because a problem we have in our communities is that you see people consulting just random people. People who have no idea what they're talking about. That's why when you seek advice from someone, make sure that they have expertise. They are experts in the field. Yeah, and you go and go and ask a doctor, obviously, should I invest in Dogecoin? And this is obvious, bad, right? As someone who has more expertise in that field. And that's why, you know, this is a problem that I see even with the ulama. I was in Canada recently. Uh, one night after the lecture, you know how people always ask advice from the ulama, the scholars. Someone says, Sayyid, I have a question. I thought it was going to be a religious question. He says, Sayyid, uh, um, I, I have a legal question uh, about his green card. It's like, why are you asking me? How am I supposed to know? Should I do this? Should I sign this application? No, this application. I don't know. I'm a religious scholar. Even if I know something, but you're not coming to the right person. Go and ask someone who's an expert in law. Unfortunately, sometimes we ask the scholars things that they were not even trained to do. You know what? Example, dream interpretation. I went to the house of 15 years. Not one day did I see there's a class 
of dream interpretation. Not one day did I see ulama telling us, our teachers, come and learn dream interpretation. I learn Quran, I learn hadith, I learn akhlaq. I come here, people just ask me, what does this dream mean? What does that dream mean? Habibi, that's not my expertise. I never study dream interpretation. Aslan, there is no class in Qom, Najaf, and Mashhad, any of these cities that teach you dream interpretation. So don't go to the, just because I'm wearing this imama, doesn't mean I know how to do dream interpretation. How do, you, how do you do it, dream interpretation? I personally believe it's a gift from Allah. Allah gives it to whoever He wants. It's not something that could be acquired. It's not something that could be taught. This is one example. Let me give you another example that we ulama, you know, we see. Many times we mention this. We're asked about gelatin. Is gelatin halal or haram? So the answer the ulama give, they say, look, if it's from a non-Muslim country and it's taken from animals, then it is halal if, if it goes through istihala, meaning if there is a chemical change, a substance change. Over and over again, me and hundreds of ulama. After we mention this, we are asked, Sayyid, does gelatin go through istihala? How am I supposed to know? And I study the Quran. I don't study labs and what happens to gelatin in the lab. Habibi, go visit a lab and see if istihala happens. We don't even know which questions we're supposed to ask, brothers and sisters. And I can tell you about the Quran, about the hadith. Bas gelatin, does it go through istihala or does it? That's not my expertise. Even if I tell you, this is just a, a, an opinion. This is a layman opinion. This is not an expert opinion. Ask people who have what? Who have expertise in the food industry. There are some people, their jobs are food technicians. Ask those individuals, even if they're not Muslim. Ask them to describe to you exactly how the, you know, how, what happens to gelatin when they take it from the animal until it becomes, you know, the product, the, the gummy bears or whatever. So don't come and ask the scholar every question just because he is a scholar. Ask him what he is trained to do. This is the correct mashwara. This is the correct way of consulting the ulama. Ask them about things that they were taught to do. Now, there's a hadith, I only have three minutes, real quickly, real quickly, so I can't get into the detail. There's a hadith from Imam Ali and Rasulullah. They mention the same thing. They say three people never consult them. Number one, Al-Jaban, the coward. Or to a lesser degree, the timid. Some people who are always negative. They never want to take risk. Never ask them for advice. Why? They'll always discourage you. They'll always point to the negatives. You want to sell your house? Wait, wait, wait. It'll get more expensive. Sah? You want to buy a house? Wait, wait, wait. It will get less expensive. Yeah, I mean, what do I do? Is it either going to go up? And they always discourage you. Jaban, he's always afraid. He doesn't want to sell. He doesn't want to buy. You want to go to Ziyara? La, don't. There's COVID. There is Ma'adri. Uh, this, there's that. It's not safe. Some people, there's, they're always pessimistic, always negative. Jaban, khawaf. Do not ask such individuals. Number two, the hadith of the Prophet Imam Ali says, Wala tastashir al bakhil. Bakhil. Can we please have the young ones quiet down a little, please? The second one is the stingy one. La tastashir al bakhil. Al-Bakhil is the stingy one. Why? Because the Bakhil, the stingy one, he will discourage you from giving, from spending. You want to spend? He makes it seem as if it's going to be Yom Al-Qiyamah tomorrow. لا يا عمي inflation, or COVID, or Russia, or World War III, don't spend. So he discourages you from spending. He discourages you from giving a sadaqah. You want to give a sadaqah? He's always trying to find ways to discourage you from giving sadaqah. For example, he tells you, in our communities, our masajid don't need. MashaAllah, there's so many wealthy people that are giving. Aslan, what do the masajid do? What expenses do they have? Don't seek advice from a bakhil. These are just excuses. The real reason why he's telling you don't give to this masjid or that masjid, because he's bakhil. He's stingy. He's not just stingy with his money, he's stingy even with your money. He doesn't want you to spend even your money. So he will tell you, look at these masajid, they're not doing anything. Who can I trust? Do they really need this? Tell them, Yalla, Ammi, I won't spend it here. Let me send it to Lebanon. Don't send it to Lebanon because they're all thieves there and you don't know who's going to spend it. You don't know who's going to, the faqir is going to take it. What do I do with my money? Keep it in your bank account. This is what the bakhil does to you. So do not never ask financial consultation from a bakhil, from a stingy person.
And finally, I have one minute left. The third one is who? Al Hariz, the one who is greedy. Someone who is greedy for the dunya, do not ask him for advice. Because what? Because he will try to justify haram for you. He will try to find immoral ways for you to make money. You ask him, brother, how do I you know, become rich? How do I become successful? He'll give you financial advice. That's what? He'll teach you ways of making money that involve, that involve fraud, tax evasion, lying to people, correct? These individuals, don't take advice from them. You live in a kafir country, take their money. The, person, the, the problem is the hirs. There is too much hirs. That means there is too much greed. Do not seek advice from the greedy person. So once again, to sum up, make sure they are experts. And at the same time, do not seek the advice of the one who is who? Jaban, timid, who's a coward. Number two, the greedy. Uh, number two, the stingy. And number three, the greedy. Tomorrow, inshallah, I will continue and speak more about this topic. نسأل الله سبحانه وتعالى أن يتقبل أعمالنا وأن يغفر لنا ذنوبنا وأن يعجل في فرج صاحب الزمان ببركة الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد